I'd come across uh, one of my teachers from my previous school when I was in when I was in Dubai, and our school was known during the time when when I was there. Our school was known for um, for its sports as well as its academic, um, and so we used to most probably go for all the all the inter school matches and and the school used to win a lot of trophies so i asked the teacher how are we doing in in our sports and the response was uh, sadly nowadays we have butter babies he said it's it's difficult if we take them for a game and they come back even slightly injured the parents are breathing down our neck and telling us why why is my child hurt and so he said now we prefer those with uh, those games with a net in between, so there's barely any contact. It's it's a it's a phenomena that's that's there amongst us where we don't want we or we want to give everything to our child or the ones we care for, and we don't we don't want to hurt anyone. We don't even want our children hurt. Like a parent was struggling and telling me, I can't, I'm not able to get my child to eat by himself. He's nearly 10 years old and he still needs his mother to feed him. So I said, why don't you just leave the plate over there? He said, you won't understand, Father, because my, my wife sees to it that she always feeds him. He needs to be fed. So now he's reached a stage where he doesn't know how to sit and eat by himself. It's, it's always there. We, we, try and, we try and create a nice little bubble for those we believe we care for, and we create a nice little bubble for them without realizing that bubble might actually be harmful for them. In today's gospel passage, Jesus is, is continuing this conversation of John chapter 6 where he's speaking about his, his body and his blood and he says, you will eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now these words, it was very disturbing for them. When Jesus took five loaves and two fish and he multiplied it, no one complained about it. But when Jesus said, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, it was all too gory. It was just too much. And they said, this teaching is too unacceptable. In, in, the, in the lectionary, it actually says it's intolerable. And that's, that's something we get to hear very often nowadays. Oh, this is just intolerable. A person uh, was speaking to me and he said, it's, it's difficult trying to teach religion to children nowadays because everyone else gets very touchy about it. And this person was saying how he was trying to explain the, the stations of the cross and immediately was pulled up and said, do not say such things, it disturbs the child's mind. Showing them the cross and the pain of the cross or the blood of the cross, it disturbs the child's mind. We've reached a stage where everything disturbs everyone. We cannot accept intolerable language. And so now we have good parliamentary language that we can, we can speak in front of everyone. Everyone feels okay with it. Well, Jesus didn't fall in that category. When Jesus spoke, they said, this teaching is too difficult. The Lord didn't respond by saying, oh, well, then I'll make it softer for you. You know, I'll make it something that's palatable for you. You can digest it and it'll be okay. Jesus goes on when, when they say, this teaching is so difficult, this is intolerable. Jesus says, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? And he goes on. He doesn't change his teachings. He doesn't change his teachings just because the people in front of him found it difficult to digest. When he came to the 12, Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? He doesn't tell them, you know, I've, I've lost one set of disciples, so now maybe let me get my wordings right with the, these disciples so that they don't walk away as well. Rather, he comes to them and says, do you also, want to, do you also wish to go away? If you want, you can leave. But these are my words. This is my teaching. And that is what the Lord always did. This is my word. This is my teaching. Sadly, we live in a world today we are, where, we are trying to, where we are trying to soften up even God's word. 
what he himself did not do, we have a tendency to soften up God's word and present it to others in something that's very palatable for them. Who gave us the authority to change the power of God's word in all its reality and it's all its power? That's why beautifully I always keep this in mind. A professor taught us this when uh, he spoke about the great theologian Edward Skillerbex who would say, the word of God is like a roaring lion waiting to devour. But very often we make it like a little pussycat putting its tail between its legs and walking off. The word is meant to pierce our hearts. It's not just meant to soothe us. It's not just meant to make us feel good. When God speaks, God speaks so that there is a conversion of the heart. There's a change within us so that the soul is prepared for the kingdom of God. And that is why Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing until it divides soul and spirit. The word is meant to pierce. It will cut at times. It will challenge at times. And it is meant to be that. And we have to permit the word to challenge us. We have to permit the word to convert us. That is why 2 Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, St. Paul says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. It is meant for that. God's word and scripture is useful for teaching, for reproof, for corrections, so that the heart might be converted. Only if we permit the word to do what it's meant to do, will we ever know the truth. And as John chapter 8, 31 says, if I know the truth, the truth will set me free. Or else we will just keep manipulating God's word to make us feel good and comfortable. And when it doesn't, we walk away like those who walked away from the Lord. It's good today to ask ourselves, am I permitting God's word to enter into my heart with all its stark reality and maybe maybe even challenging my life and the way I live my life. And that is where we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to interpret God's word to us, for the Spirit to bring the word into our hearts and make our hearts burn like those apostles at the, those who were going towards Emmaus. Didn't our hearts burn when he spoke to us? And that is what the word should do. It should burn our hearts, transform our hearts, and we should permit it to do so rather than manipulating God's word to make it tolerable to our palate and easy for us to digest. Let the word of God be hard to digest. Let the word of God be challenging to digest. At least that will prepare us for God's kingdom. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord, you have given us your word and you have spoken to us. Very often what you say soothes our heart, comforts us and strengthens us. Lord, sometimes your word will terrify us. It will challenge us. It will convict us. Give us the heart that is humble enough to learn that getting convicted by God's word is the path to holiness. Getting strengthened in God's word is the path to holiness. To be reproved and corrected through God's word is the path to holiness. Let me not be afraid to walk that path to holiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh.